Hey guys, it's Vampire Mike from SegaCityUniverse.com and GravesideEntertainment.com. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about one of my favorite video game series. It, uh, it started out as a comic book. There's a chance that you might have played it. It's The Darkness on, uh, well, it's on PS3, but I, I have it on 360, as you see. So, The Darkness started out as uh, a demo for me. I downloaded a demo on Xbox Live years ago. And I was like, alright, this is kind of interesting. You can like dual wield guns and then have these weird tentacles coming out of you and move them around freely. Not well yeah, you can move them around sort of freely, but you can like, you know, smack things and cut shit in half and pick things up and there was some like skill to it. So kinda like Doctor Octopus, I guess is the best way you would put it. Um anyhow. I downloaded this demo and I thought it was pretty cool and it ended up going, you know, really cheap online eventually or whatever, or GameStop and I picked it up. I was totally blown away by the game. Little did I know that the game was based on a comic book series. So it wasn't for me how the comic books got me into the game, the games got me into the comic book. So that was really cool. Um, the, the main character's name is Jackie Estacado, and uh, the first game is made by Starbreeze. And Starbreeze made uh, the Chronicles of Riddick series. Uh, on Xbox, and then they re-released that HD kind of version on the 360. The and I think it was on PS3 as well. I can't recall. the The game is sort of similar feeling, but not nearly as stealthy as Chronicles of Riddick. But if you enjoyed that, you'll probably like this. It's just more action oriented. Jackie Estacado, to go back a little bit, is a, a mob member for his uncle's crime family. I think it's the Franchetti crime family, and. You start as this, guy, as this guy, and you know, you're doing bad things, but deep down you kind of have a good heart in a way. So he's kind of like, he's not really a good guy, that's the cool part about it. It's, I wouldn't say an anti-hero like Batman, but he definitely fits the anti-hero bill. He, uh, anyway, you get mixed up in this whole thing, and in the game you have to, um, actually no, I don't want to ruin the story, but you're in this crime family and things turn on you and the crime family now opposes you and you have to defend yourself. The cool part about the game is you're not just some mobster with guns, you get imbued with this power that, um, and you'll, this isn't really spoiling anything as it's kind of said right away, this power uh, goes from generation to generation of your family unless you destroy it and it gives you this ultimate power. It's called the darkness because it comes from like I guess it would be kind of like hell, and it, it's, it gets its power from the dark. So if you're in the light during the game, <coughs> excuse me, if you're in the light during the game, you actually get weaker, you can't use the darkness power, you have to shoot the lights out. So there's some strategy to it, because you have to shoot the lights out to get this darkness power to, to work. So throughout the game, you'll be shooting all the lights you see, which some people might find annoying. I thought it was kind of a cool strategic maneuver uh, within the game. <coughs> excuse me. So, um... The game's excellent. Uh, the first game was uh, more open world, and uh, it it had um, sort of like a you can do what you want, sort of when you want. You travel in the subway system. The subway looks awesome. It takes place in New York City, but the subway looks awesome and pretty realistic. So when I go on the subway now in Manhattan, I the first game that always pops to mind is The Darkness. Yeah, I just can't help it. Um, you also get these little guys, they're called Darklings. If you see here, on the front, this is like the main image from the first game. Um, this little guy here, see, right here, he's, uh, he's one of the Darklings, and as are these people around you, that's Jackie in the middle. And uh, the Darklings are these creatures you can summon to help you uh, fight people. They always have these like one-liners and these jokes, and they run around and like beat the shit out of people and then piss on them. and make these dirty jokes and but uh, they were like comic relief but they were also like really evil and they were part of the the, the darkness powers you have you know, I love them and I love the series so much and some people might find this foolish but I really don't care I love the series so much and, and found it to be such a great uh, you know media for me with the books and the comics and and the games that I actually got a I based some of my tattoos on the darkness um, one of the main one really is, I don't know if you can see it on camera here, I'll try and get up and get in there a little bit. It's right there. 
the, the, I'm blocking my own light, but in here, if you can, if you can see, is the uh, the a version of the Darkling from the front of the game, and uh, and this, and um, I just gave my my tattoo artist the picture, and I said, do something like this, but you know, a little less goofy, and he made it, you know, have horns and gave it a little more demon-esque uh, appearance, but uh, very very similar. So, um, the first game was made by Starbreeze, like I said, and I'm trying to think what else. The multiplayer sucked, that was the only thing. The whole game was kind of open world-ish. It really tugged at my heartstrings. When I was playing the game, I almost like shed a tear at one point. The, um, the storytelling is great. Like I said, you can kind of multi, not multitask, I guess you could, but you use these tentacles with like demon faces. They're also on the cover somewhere too. You know, like kind of here. You can see up in the corner here and uh, where's the other one? Like here, over here. There's like these demon faces, and um, they like tentacles with these mouths, and you can rip people's hearts out and eat them, and that's how you get more power by eating these people's hearts after you kill them. Um, one is definitely longer than two in terms of the games. Um, let me let me break them apart a little bit. So both games have uh, Mike Patton as the darkness. If you don't Mike, know Mike Patton, he is the singer and vocalist for many things. He has a very wide range of musical talent. He was in Faith No More, most uh, importantly, and that's how he kind of got big. He was in um, this weird band that wears, wears masks, and they run around and use weird, weird instruments called Mr. Bungle. Then he went over to Faith No More, which uh, I think was taking was taking musicians uh, to try out for vocalists. They actually tried Courtney Love out at one point. But, and they took Mike Patton, and he, his range goes from like opera to screaming death metal to like a rock rap. He can kind of do it all. He is a man of many, you know, talents. So they took him for the, the video game to play The Darkness, and he's got this voice like this. Like it's this very scratchy, kind of demonic voice. So sometimes if you go into the light, he'll like yell at you, or if you see one of the coolest. Uh, lines is if you see humans come by and uh, the darkness starts talking to you, which is, you know, Mike Patton, he's like, these are nothing but meat puppets, Jackie. And he like has this demonic, and it's just always kind of there in the back of your head. So my, Mike Patton's very uh, skilled in changing his voice up. He also, um, little side note, he also does the voices of the infected in the Left 4 Dead series. He was also... Uh, some of the noises, I don't know if he was GLaDOS, but he was some of the the noises and the, and the screeches, I think, at the end of Portal. So that was kind of interesting. So he's definitely uh, got his uh, hold in the video game industry with his vocals, because he's that good. If you haven't heard his music, check out Tomahawk, Faith No More, uh, Mr. Bungle. He has some side projects. One of it is a complete album in Italian that's excellent, like opera type music or classical type Italian music. Um, he's in so many bands, I can't even, he did a side project, he did a, a couple songs with Sepultura and Dellinger Escape Plan, he's just, he's amazing. So, not to go off too much on that, um, I'm trying to think, oh, the voice of Jackie Estacado in the first game was Kirk Acevedo from the Oz Moop, the Oz TV show, really great, he sounded awesome as a, uh, a mobster and like a mob boss type of, type of voice. The second one had this new guy, Brian Bloom. I wasn't as thrilled with Brian's performance. I prefer Kirk Acevedo. I also think the first game was a lot longer and more in depth than the sequel, but they're both excellent. Um, like I said, the first one's a little more open world. You can go around and do side quests and different missions, where the second game doesn't have as many missions. And the, second, the first one has a lot more um, emotion and relationships that you make with people. There's this character called Butcher Joyce. I don't know if I have a picture of him. I'll see if I could pull one open real quick. But Butcher Joyce is, there he is. Butcher Joyce is a uh, cleaner. So in the game, the mob families use him. Let's see if I can get a decent uh, shot in there. It's this gentleman over here. He's a, uh, he looks kind of like a, I don't know, hillbilly type character with a big beard. He, uh, he's a cleaner, so after you do your killings and everything's all screwed up, he comes in and he disinfects and cleans all the place and dismantles and gets rid of the bodies so that you're not caught. He had a very big part in the first game, um, 
as did Jackie's like love interest girlfriend, which is the main link in the game emotionally. And they both don't have a huge part in the sequel, um, especially Butcher Joyce. His his part was very toned down, which was sad because he had a lot of character and he was very funny. And um, in the second game, also they went the the studio who did the first game, like I said, was Starbreeze, and the second game was Digital Extremes, who did a lot of computer games. They also did um, the multiplayer on Bioshock Two. They did part of Bioshock 1, I don't know what part. They uh, they did the Unreal games on the PC. So they have a lot of stuff behind them, but the game was more action-oriented, very linear, and a lot shorter. It was about four to five hours, where the first game would last you a good, I would say, eight to nine hours if you got everything, maybe even more, maybe more like 10 or 12. Um, very, very uh, different looking. The first game went for more of a cinematic style, I guess, kind of like a gritty cin cinematic style, while the second game went for a cel-shaded comic book style, which makes sense because the game was initially in comic book form. I also recommend you check out the comics if you like the games. Um, the cool thing is you feel like you have this this power, this really big power, like overpower to, to a degree, but then at points you either lose the power or get weakened and you can't you do as much. But um, the power is very cool to have this this great um, evil power around you. But then at the same time, the power is evil and it's trying to overtake you as a host and just use you. So where you're not using it, it's using you. So you have to keep it at bay at the same time while you're playing the game through the storyline. Uh, I'm trying to think. It's all about like inner demons and fighting with yourself and where where's the line between this this bad guy? I mean, he's a mob boss, but he has this heart to him, and he has these, these love for his family and his friends and his girlfriend, Jenny, where, where, does it, where does it end and where does it begin? So it kind of asks you that question while you're playing it, because, or at least for me, it posed that question of how bad of a person are you, and even if you are a bad person, where, where does the line end and begin? And he still has this side to him, like he's a beautiful person, as much as being a horrible person by killing people and murdering people, but most of the time it's bad guys. Um, so I think he's trying to kind of change a new leaf and uh, do the right thing. So that was that was really cool. Um, oh, they also, the, the people Digital Extremes also made Dark Sector. I don't know if you guys have played that. That was a good third person, uh, it's like a third person action adventure type game. Um, let me think, let me think. In the second title also, he, he has more of a um, the biggest relationship for me, I thought, was the second title was uh, the Darkling creature that I just pointed out before. He has a much bigger role, where in the first game it's really uh, your girlfriend Jenny is, is the main relationship you have. So overall, uh, this the multiplayer, by the way, is better in the sequel, but um, still feels slightly tacked on. You play as these side story characters who have some darkness powers imbued in them that they can do certain things, but not nearly as much as, uh, as Jackie. Jackie's like, you know, top notch. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, uh, there's a first sneezing on camera. So, uh, if, if you like dark games, if you like first, they're both first person, by the way, I should have mentioned that initially. They're first, both first person, ga first person games. Um, I enjoyed the first one more. Um, it had more emotion, it had more depth to it, the story. The graphics, um, I'd say they were cool in the second and the first. I liked them both. And uh, they're first person, you can you control this kind of anti-hero with awesome superpowers. And he, um, there's sort of puzzles in the first one where you have to make the darkness leave you and turn to like this snake form and find little entrances and go in different ways to open doors and then let you go further. Uh, you have this subway system you can travel through and all these characters you meet and interact with and it, it shows you how you got the darkness powers and why it went into you. One of the main things is the darkness uh, goes into, I believe it was on your it's either your 18th or your 21st birthday, I don't remember. I want to say 21st and you cannot have sex. If you have sex you pass the darkness powers onto the next person that you impregnate and then you die. 
So that's always a cool thing because now he's also sexually frustrated because he can't sleep with anyone. And in in the comics and in the game, Jackie Estacado is like a playboy kind of character. He's always he's got all this money from being in the mob and he's always sleeping with all these different types of women. He's very promiscuous, but he has this woman in the back of his of his heart, you know, Jenny, who is this big love interest that he's never really had the the um, the gumption to tell her how he felt, but they both know how they really feel. And they were raised together in an orphanage. So, anyhow, great, great games, awesome comics. Uh, my friend Brian had got me one of the comics signed by one of the creators of a, a side story. Um, so that was really cool to get. If you have not played the Darkness series, you are missing out. The first game especially, it's very heart-wrenching. The second game is more cool and, for, and forward and linear, as I said. But please check out the Darkness series. I cannot say enough good things about it. It's Vampire Mike from SegaCDUniverse.com and GravesideEntertainment.com. And uh, thanks for watching. It's one of my favorite series, and I hope you give it a shot. And uh, please do. So thanks for watching, guys. Be good. Let me know if you've played the Darkness series and what you think. And if you haven't, check it out. Tell me what you think. Take care, guys.